We're at lesson 3.5c, and we're going to discuss complex fractions. A complex fraction is a fraction that has a fraction in its numerator, denominator, or both. We can even have an improper fraction, a fraction greater than 1, as a numerator or a denominator. So each of these are complex fractions. So complex fractions are fractions that have a fraction in its numerator, denominator, or both. Complex is an adjective. It means made up of numerous parts. So there's numerous parts here, aren't there? They're also called compound fractions. Here we have 3 fourths divided by 1 half. We can write it like this, 3 fourths divided by 1 half. We divide fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor. So the reciprocal of this divisor is a 2 over a 1. We just multiply straight across. 3 times 2 is 6, and 4 times 1 is 4. We simplify it. We have 1 and 2 fourths. We can simplify it some more as 1 and a half. Now, if you don't remember how to multiply fractions, or divide by the reciprocal, I'm going to have links for 6th grade and even 4th grade in this description to help you remember how to do these so you could quickly review them. Here the numerator is a whole number and the denominator, the divisor, is a fraction. This means we have 4 divided by 1 half. We multiply by the reciprocal, 2 over 1. It's the flipped upside down version of this fraction. We have 4 times 2 is 8 over 1 times 1 is 1. We simplify it, and we have 8. When presented with a decimal as a numerator or denominator, we can convert it to a fraction first. We don't want them to be mixed with a decimal and a fraction, we want them either to both be decimals or both be fractions. So if you remember from 6th grade, we have a 1 and 5 tenths that's equal to 1 and a half. And if you remember from 4th grade, in order to turn this into a fraction greater than 1, also called an improper fraction, we multiply the whole number by the denominator. 1 times 2 is 2. We add the numerator, that's a 3, and we use that denominator. So we have 3 halves. Now we have 3 halves divided by 1 fourth. We multiply by the reciprocal, 4 over 1. We get 12 halves, which simplifies to 6. We use the rules for multiplying and dividing rational numbers and integers to use the correct sign for the, our quotient. We have a negative 3 fourths divided by 1 half. We're going to do a negative 3 fourths times the reciprocal, 2 over 1. They have unlike signs, so that's going to produce a negative product. We get 6 over 4, it's a negative 6 fourths, which simplifies to negative 1 and a half. When we have unlike signs, they produce a negative. Here we have 1 divided by negative 5 thirds. We can write it as 1 divided by negative 5 thirds. We multiply by the reciprocal, negative 3 fifths. 1 times negative 3 fifths is negative 3 fifths. That's identity property, isn't it? 1 times any number is going to be that number. It keeps its identity. Now we have both of them as negatives. We have a negative 5 6 divided by a negative 1 half. We can write it like this. We can see they have like signs. So we know like signs produce a positive. We know our quotient is going to be positive. We multiply by the reciprocal. Instead of negative 1 half, we have a negative 2 over 1. And we go straight across. 5 times 2 is 10. 6 times 1 is 6. We have a positive 10 sixths, which simplifies to 1 and 4 6, which simplifies to a positive 1 and 2 thirds. So let's try walking through a word problem. Tala wants to divide one half pound box of chocolates into small bags. Each bag will hold one eighth pound of chocolates. How many bags of chocolates can Tala fill? And we think 
we need to split one half into one eighth size parts. We have one half divided by one eighth. We multiply by the reciprocal, eight over one. We go straight across, we have eight halves. We simplify it, eight divided by two is four. And we know that Tala can fill four bags. We can write a complex fraction as a simple fraction by rewriting it as multiplication of the reciprocal. Here we have a complex fraction. We have a over b as our numerator and c over d as our denominator. We can write it as a over b multiplied by the reciprocal d over c. See how we flipped that one around? We can give it one fraction bar and write it as a times d over b times c. See how we have a times d over b times c? Instead of having two fraction bars, we can just give it one large fraction bar and write it like this as a simple fraction. So here we have a negative 48 eighths divided by a negative 12 fourths. 48 divided by eight is six. We have unlike signs for the 48 and the eight, so that's going to be a negative 6. Here we have a negative 12 divided by a positive 4. They have unlike signs. That's going to be a negative 3. We have a negative 6 over a negative 3. Now, take a look at this. We have 48 divided by a negative 8 for our numerator. And we've got negative 12 divided by 4 as our denominator. And we get negative 6 over negative 3. For this one, we solve the numerator, then we solve the denominator. We're getting the same thing because this still means 48 divided by negative 8 for the numerator and negative 12 divided by 4 for the denominator. It's just written differently with one large fraction bar. They have like signs, so it's going to be positive. We get a positive 2. It's the same as if we split it up as 48 over 12, a negative 12, divided by a negative 8 divided by a 4. See that? We've got the 48 over the negative 12 and the negative 8 over the 4. They're both being divided. We can split apart this big fraction bar into two simple fractions like this. 48 divided by 12 is 4. They have unlike signs, so that's a negative 4. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. They have unlike signs, so it's a negative 2. And negative 4 and negative 2 have like signs, so it's going to be a positive. We get a positive 2. Now, if that was really confusing, try going back to when I showed you the example up here, this one. And keep in mind that this fraction bar means divided by. So we have 48 divided by a negative 8 right here. And we have a negative 12 divided by a 4 right here. But we can split this apart and just have one division symbol here and do it separately like this. And we'll get the same answer. Either way, we're going to get a positive 2. The quotient will be the same. Here it's telling us to solve. We've got a negative 156 fifths divided by 1 half. So we are going to multiply by the reciprocal. We're going to flip this around so that the 2 is a numerator and 1 is a denominator. And we're going to multiply straight across. We have a negative 156 multiplied by 2. So we can do their absolute values and do 156 times 2 and get a 312. So we know that's going to be a negative. We have a negative 312, and we have 5 times 1 is 5, so we have a negative 312 fifths. Now, you may be able to leave it like this, depending on what the assignment is, but if you want to simplify this, we need to do 312 divided by 5. We do their absolute values, and we see that 5 can fit into 312 62 and 4 tenths times. So we have a negative 62 and 4 tenths because this was a negative here. We can simplify this and write it as a fraction as 
a negative 62 and 2 fifths if we want to simplify it completely. We're finished with part C. We're actually going to do the going further, which is 3.5D, and we're going to talk about justifying negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to a positive 1. So check the back of the lesson for 3.5 and you'll see the going further, you'll see the going further lesson. So just remember, that fraction bar is like a division symbol. It's telling us to divide the numerator by the denominator. And did you know that fraction bar is also called a vinculum? Yes, it is. Join me for the next lesson and have a really wonderful day. Bye.